two, one. All right, welcome back to.
15 years ago, so I really don't give it much. But back to Spider-Man. We're, we're going a little too far now. Oh, no, it's all good. Um, so, again, it's been so many months now, and it's out streaming, so spoilers. I love how they brought Willem Dafoe back if he nails the Green Goblin a second time. It's exit. So, remember those episodes of The Office later on, and all of a sudden Kevin's voice doesn't sound right? Yeah. And it's just either he had a sore throat, or he, sometimes you do a silly voice, you just lose it. Yeah. He took 20 years off in between. Nails it. Oh, yeah. And it's not even like an evolution, where it changes, oh, no. changes. No, it's spot on. You can take his performance, put it in the first movie, same he, guy. He also refused to use stunt doubles, I heard. I respect that. Like, for most scenes. Like, there's probably some scenes they had to. I heard that, and the one that plays Doc Ock. Is the one that was spilling the beans. He's like, yeah, he refuses to do stunt doubles. Yep. <laughs> he goes, I'm 70 years old, I'm using a stunt double. I, but he's talking about how much he enjoyed it, because when they made the first one, it was a real arms, it was puppets. And now they didn't have that. I mm -hmm. preferred the puppets, though. Sometimes I looked at them, and it just didn't feel like the realistic Doc Ock type of arms. So Sam Raimi's movies were straight out of the comic books. Mm -hmm. You can take it and put it on the screen, and you can take scenes that were in the comics. Yeah. There's some really pivotal scenes. So that's why it seems more comic book-like. Yeah. Um, as far as making an actor wear a giant puppet suit, he wouldn't have done it. Yeah, yeah, so, that's true. So, CGI, that bad boy. But it kept me guessing. Yeah. There's no point where I thought I figured it out the entire way through. Did you know that um, Sandman and Lizard were completely CGI'd in? So, I knew something was wrong with Sandman. They never actually got them on screen. They reused lines and just used stuff that they already had, essentially. So that actor must just one day open, figure out, oh, they ripped me off, and then gets a giant check in the mail <laughs> for work he did 20 years ago. So I knew something was wrong with him, because if you look on screen, he was so much paler than everyone else, and it's because they ripped it. Mm -hmm. Like, they pretty much just ripped it from the movie, which is fine. I didn't know that about... What was it? Lizard. That's, they only had one scene where he was in human form, mm -hmm. two, the and they stripped that straight out from one of the movies or from wherever they had the... I thought it was weird that he didn't have more lines, because honestly, he was one of the better villains in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. So, but there's all so many good callbacks, like all yeah. of a sudden they're fighting at the high school again, like in The Amazing Spider-Man. Jamie Foxx was so good in it. Jamie Foxx, we don't deserve. <laughs> they... Took Jamie Foxx, and I just rewatched these movies be recently, right before it came out. Yeah. They took Jamie Foxx, well known actor, high paid actor, and then CGI'd blue all over him for the entire movie. Mm -hmm. You have Jamie Foxx, let him be Jamie Foxx. I like how they wrote around that so that he could be Jamie Foxx in this one, too. Mm -hmm. They gave him the arc reactor and everything, and. I don't know if it's true or not. I heard rumors that Emma Stone was supposed to be in it, and then she was pregnant. So she didn't want to do it. She was supposed to be in it. I think Kirsten Dunst was... They wanted to. But then there's too much or something I read. They couldn't squeeze it in organically. They couldn't squeeze it. I think it had to be with Emma Stone too. Mm -hmm. I think that was part of it. I heard and, rumors of Spider-Gwen. Yes. So, there, so originally Emma Stone was supposed to come back as Spider-Gwen. Mm -hmm. And she was supposed to go back with Andrew Spider-Man. Oh, that... Um, or there was supposed to be some type of connection which would have been probably made in the future where they end up living together and stuff to get back what he lost, essentially. That line where he goes, find your Gwen. Yeah. Or no, no, what does he say? He goes, um, she was my... Find your Rachel. Rachel. Rachel was the girl he was supposedly with. Who? Andrew's Spider-Man. No, 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 he goes to uh, Peter when he's talking about how he lost Gwen, he goes, oh, she was my MJ. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. But, I don't know but, but, so he ended up being with somebody named Rachel. Who? Andrew Spider-Man. In he, that movie. There's, there's this character that he says, he's like, but I found my Rachel. Did and, he? Yes, he does. But then he tells Toby Spider-Man later, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, so you found somebody else? He's like, nah, I was just lying to get, get the kids Was that out. a deleted scene? No, this happened in the movie. <laughs> Uh, again, I'm going to rewatch it regardless, but... Yeah, I, I swear I this zero, happened. I was so happy watching that in the theater. And uh, we lucked out. Because I waited a couple weeks because COVID... I don't really need to catch COVID. 
Yeah. So I waited a couple of weeks. We went really early in the morning. I had the theater. There's very few people in the theater, so I was just so elated. Another final, like, actual Rachel people associated with Andrew Garfield, so I can't find one. You gotta remember, Marco watched it on a 4 by 2 screen, so. Yep, yep, because that messes with the audio. Um, I thought he said Rachel, but it might have been, might have been any other character. I, I feel like this isn't a take that anyone else is taking, no pun intended. I, they did not made dirty, huh? What? I feel like they did not made dirty. Yeah. You let her survive six movies just to axe her because of Peter's own fault? Yeah. I I get you want her to be the Uncle Ben character. So, but... Yeah. The issue I have with it is he's already Spider-Man. But he already... Tony Stark was also kind of his Uncle Ben already, and he already lost him. Right. So, like, the way that May went out in this movie, it didn't feel like... Like, I feel like he already got that message from Endgame already. So, yeah, and on top of that, the story was always have a good heart. Yeah. And then it's going to murder your aunt. <laughs> and it's not like Peter had a bad aunt. I mean, a bad um, heart. Yeah. I never watched those movies thinking, like, oh, he's a bad guy. It was so, weird. It felt like it was unfulfilling for, like, it just felt like it was empty for a death. Like, there wasn't much to it. Right, so they kill her, right, to get this one movie to get to the third arc. Yeah. I don't know. I hope it pays off. I just feel like she's way funnier <laughs> and worth kept uh, as a character, as an actress, to keep Marissa Tomei around. What's hilarious, too, is they forget that he's Peter Parker, but people remember Spider-Man. Right. That's so weird for the Avengers. So, like, they'll know him as Spider-Man, mm -hmm. but, like, where are they going to do freak out when he takes his mask off? They have a big plan. It's just not knowing what the plan is. Yeah. And the thing with Spider-Man is he always gets shit on in the end. Yeah. It's a sad story. Like, and that's what Spider-Man's going to be, and that's the lesson you learn is with great power comes great responsibility, yeah. and he has to give up his happiness for the greater good. Yeah. But what Tobey Maguire is saying is you don't have to, you can have it all. Yes. Pick a lesson. And again, it's an amazing movie. I, I, think I it's just because don't know. <clears throat> there are three different takes on Spider-Man now. Right. So, like, I like the idea that they can have three different takes. I think eventually Tom Holland will get to the point where Toby, like, even Toby admits, like, his Spider-Man doesn't have it all figured out entirely in that movie. Because mm -hmm. he says that him and MJ have, like, their problems and stuff, and he still, like, isn't really balancing things well. But I heard that Toby specifically had things in the script changed a little because mm -hmm. he didn't want too much revealed about his Spider-Man, about what's been going on. Because that just kind of pigeonholes him if they do decide to do another one. So, so I'm thinking they may do... Well, I feel like once Raimi's done with whatever his involvement with... Well, he's directing Multiverse of Madness and whatever mm -hmm. else they Which is already for. done. They got trailers <clears> coming <throat> I think they may be using it for some other things, though, for like connecting stuff. I feel like once he's done with that stuff, I see a Raimi 4 coming out. Raimi says he uh, would do it, and Kristen Dunn said she'd be open to it. Because now it's like, I feel like they're going to have this whole Spider-Universe thing, and they'll have like maybe a couple movies for all of them, and then they come back together for... Like a Spiders of Men Avengers. Yeah. So my thing is, I'm good with it. I think people have been asking for it for a long time. And we're at this time where you don't have to worry about confusion... But they the also see the success of the Into the Spider-Verse movie first, uh, mm -hmm. the first one, and how they had part one of the second one coming out within the next year. Yeah, they've been working on it for yeah. quite some time. My problem is, so say you go Andrew Garfield, the third Spider-Man, and it <laughs> tanks, it shuts everything down. You are going to have to make a perfect movie every time, or else they're going to shut it down. I, and this, Sony's just being really really um stubborn yeah. so apparently morbius had a bunch of references to spider-man that were edited out you were telling that me, right? completely edited out and i'm not sure if that's like feige being like hey i don't want to be associated with this movie or what and honestly i'm okay with it until i can see it but if it's as bad as everyone's saying it is 
I'd rather disassociate it now than later. Yeah. And my problem is Michael Keaton's in it. You see him in the trailer. So if Michael Keaton is reviving his Spider-Man 1 character... Him being in the trailer, I don't think he's in the actual movie. Oh, they switched it last minute. He's only in the end credits. You know they already released the end credits. They released them a week before the movie came out. Oh, I don't like watching them before I... Because otherwise the story just doesn't make sense. No, the sense. director just released the end credits a week before the movie came out. Right, so that means they were already desperate. So, I watched it and I heard people, like, shitting on it. Mm -hmm. The dialogue is terrible. It is some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in my life. And also, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me in general. I, Sony's trying to cash in on Spider-Man without Spider-Man. Venom is Spider-Man, but different. He still has the Spider-Man... How was the second Venom movie? I never saw it. Um, just I I heard that it was like meh. It's the exact same quality as the first one. And what I like is it's ninety minutes. Oh okay. So and in a time where no movie is ninety minutes, you sit down, you watch it, you're done. Um, I feel like it could have been longer, and the Carnage character they just kind of box in at the end. I don't want to spoil it how they do it but Carnage is like a major They're, character uh, in Woody Harrelson would play him right mm -hmm. so you have a great actor a great comic book character and then at the end they pretty much put him in a box like metaphorically so you can't use him again and that's my thing is like if Venom's standing alone fine I don't need him to take on Tom Holland I don't like the arch style for his Venom his arch art style like the, the way Art, yeah. Sorry, A-R-T? Yeah. I'm not being a dick. I'm confused. So his... I, I don't like... The, I don't know, like... I feel like his art style, it may work with, like, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man with how they've done their villains, but I feel like the way that Tom Holland's villains have worked and the way they've looked, it doesn't fit into his universe. If that makes sense? Yeah, I can see that. Like, even, like, he, like this Venom wouldn't work with Tobey Maguire's movie like we've already seen a venom in his world yeah we have where was topher grace that's he died where we... remember no oh, he could have come, come, come back that would have been hilarious topher grace was sitting by the phone for hours i wish they brought him back and made a that 70s show reference oh the four of them just sitting at a table going over the plan <laughs> oh, that would have been good that would have been good yeah i rewatched him there's no redeeming that Venom in the third movie. So much it happens in that movie. But no, so like Venom's good for what it is. And if you enjoy that, it's a great movie. But for some reason, people have turned on it. I don't get why. One what of our earliest podcast on? episodes is you saying that you didn't like the CGI of the first Venom because it took you out of it and you didn't believe it was real. And then I shit on you for 10 minutes saying like, that's what makes it not real to you. That the giant symbiote spider <laughs> falling through the air while attacking rockets and other symbiotes. Hey, but I admitted that I enjoyed the movie. That was so early on. I guess if I can find that clip. Because I was laughing so hard on my... <laughs> uh, it might actually be part of the intro, too. I'll have to double check. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so what movies are coming out next for Marvel? Multiverse of Madness comes out first week of May. Really? I think it's May 6th or May 5th or something. So we're, for those that don't know, where we live, we're down to one movie theater <laughs> and it's small. Actually, there's one up in uh, North Adams, I think. Oh, uh, don't ever do it, Margo. They have like cement floors. Oh, uh, you've been there? Uh, yeah, because I used to go to high school up in North Adams. So it's just like, it'd be a quick way. May 6th. Oh, that's awesome. I've been, like, I've been avoiding trailers for that, like the plague, because you know they're going to start releasing footage. They haven't actually shown too much about it. Right. Teaser trailer number two just dropped, so do we have a major sporting event or something coming up that they can drop the last trailer at? No, baseball opening day already happened, right? Right. Masters is this week, but I don't think... March Madness is done. Yep. Maybe the Masters? No, they wouldn't do the Masters. NBA playoffs might be. NBA playoffs, Stanley Cups will be happening. About at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, so those would be the two guesses for me when they're going to drop the next trailer. But again, I won't watch it till I see it. I always forget that hockey 
and basketball playoffs happen at the same time. Like, around the same time? Yeah, right around April. Yeah. Actually, when do they happen? Because the past two years they happen at kind of different times because of... COVID. COVID. Well, COVID, they, like, shut down, so they take that year off. Yeah. But last year, I think, was the normal time. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it might have been later. I think it was a little... They they had a delayed season, yeah. But playoff hockey is awesome. It's just finding the time to watch it. Playoff hockey is intense. Oh, it's the best. It's so good. Like, that in playoff football? Nothing better. Oh, so good. Uh, just, there's nothing better. Those two. It's awesome. Um, yeah, that wraps up Spider-Man. Actually, we may get some... Sponsorship deals? No, (laughs) I wish. We may get... episode of Nerds in the Gym brought to you by... Tissue Paper. When you gotta blow your nose, blow it on tissue paper. F you, Kleenex. We could see the Spider-Man on Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, for sure. Especially since Doctor Strange was in their movie. Yeah. Um, I don't think they'd go back-to-back movies, though. I believe the next Black Panther's coming out. This I could year. definitely see one of them. Right. The new, the new Black Panther... What is it? Wakanda Forever? Yep. Yeah. I believe that's the next one after Multiverse of Madness. Uh, November 11th? Oh. It may be. Or is it Thor Love and Thunder? Oh, I heard a trailer drop for that. I didn't watch it yet, though. July 8th, 2022 for that one. Love and Thunder? Supposedly. That's exciting. I know they already filmed that one a long time ago because we got Portman's Arms. Yep, we we have Natalie Portman, Chris Hemsworth. I can't believe Christian Bale is in it. Christian Bale, uh, I'm so excited to see if they actually let him be Christian Bale or if they're going to throw a costume on him. He's the Butcher, I think. Uh, Gore, the god of something. I don't have the full name. Uh, let's see. Where's his name? The God Butcher. Yeah. So he's going to be the big bad. I just... Thank you. Maybe he looks like uh, he has the same physique as when he played Batman. I doubt it, but he can try. If, if, if they Batman asked him to, he would. My thing is that they probably had to ask him not to, so he wouldn't. The first Batman, they didn't tell him how big to get, so he worked out so hard he didn't fit into the back Batman suit on the first day of filming. They just said, get as big as you can, and then a friend of his goes, you don't tell Christian Bale that. <laughs> so he got so big, they started calling him Fat Man, because they had to like redo the Batman suit on the first day of filming. Well, he, he did that, what was it, The Machinist? And yeah. then film The Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, like... the second Batman. No, the third Batman. Was The Machinist after Dark Knight? Yeah. Okay, I got my And then, like, so. three months later, he's filming The Dark Knight Rises. So he went from, like, 120 pounds to 180 pounds of muscle. Speaking of, I mean, it's crazy because he's always been known to do that. But the toll that takes on your body. I can only imagine, like... So, did you hear last, this past week, Mark Wahlberg? He did an interview. I don't know with who. He's got a new movie coming out, the trailer. It's called Father Stew. Yeah. And it's just about this um, degenerate alcoholic who becomes a priest. Well, if I search Mark Wahlberg and the only pictures that pop up are him shirtless. You're welcome. (laughs) But anyway, so he had to put on 30 pounds of fat. Oh, I heard about that. So, because he gets into a car accident or something, and then he gains a bunch of weight and his legs don't work. So for this role... It's coming out this season. Father Stu? Yep. So, it's like a religious overtones kind of movie. And anyway, so it's like a feel-good movie. But he's talking about how he had to gain 30 pounds of muscle, or fat. Everyone else would just eat cheeseburgers and pizza. Yeah. This guy literally was like doing protein shakes and drinking straight olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> like, can't you just do anything, like, relaxing? That's... So, <sighs> straight oil that sounds so nasty so for like uh your good cholesterol you're supposed to have like a teaspoon of olive oil a day yeah if it's low i tried it once and i started gagging and that was a teaspoon this guy's chugging it mark walver used to be my guy i wonder if he mixed it in with his shakes that would have been smart probably not <laughs> but anyway so i used to be my guy like i would see his movies opening weekend all the time and i just felt like i hadn't seen him in a while I missed Uncharted. I heard that was bad. You're in the video game community. I'm not. 
So I would have enjoyed it as a Mark Wahlberg movie. I'll see it soon, I'm sure. 41 on Rotten Tomatoes. Because you nerds don't like your video games taking the movies. That's why. Name one good video game movie, because I feel like they keep trying. Sonic. Did you like Sonic? I didn't see it. Oh. I, I enjoyed heard, Sonic. I heard Detective Pokemon was pretty good. Um, Pokemon was card game video game movie, so. Okay. So that doesn't count. count. Um, let's see, is there any other ones? I don't think so. So why do they keep trying? I don't... You want to talk about some of the bad ones? Super Mario Bros. movie always gets brought up number one. I've seen movie. I saw it as a kid because my parents were like, oh, it's Mario and Luigi. And she's like, what? I saw it as a kid too. Why is Yoshi a T-Rex? That movie was awful. So that one's bad. Remember... I think it was Benedict Cumberbatch. Don't quote me on that, though. Assassin's Creed. They made an Assassin's Creed movie that was so bad, they pulled it after, like, five days in theaters. Hold on. That movie... I may have been working at the movie theater when I played. And I think I distinctly remember putting the poster up and removing it <laughs> a week later. No, I didn't work there yet. Was it Benedict Cumberbatch? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Let's see. No. Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. That's right. Sorry. I get those guys mixed up sometimes. He was oh, no. a man. There were some other movies I went to watch during the time that this was out. Mm -hmm. Walked into the theater. They were just putting the poster up. Two weeks later, I went to go see a different movie. They were pulling them out. Oh, yeah. Other bad video game movies. Um, how how hard would it be? Like that could be like a really good stealth movie. I feel like when you have nine games. Pick a game because they're each standalone. Right. Except yeah. like the fourth one, Brothers or whatever, where they combine them. The first three are like a part of a trilogy. I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. I think I stopped after the pirate one. But Actually, I think the first four. But anyway, so. All right, do a pirate movie. All right, do a Viking movie. Well, all right, do... I wouldn't watch it, but do an early 1900s period piece. All the movies, or all the games are about is they actually take actual parts of history, mm -hmm. write a little bit of a story around that history and how the, this assassin is going around and has to do like all this stealth stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like that's all they had to do. Right. I don't know... We should watch it sometime, just for research about why it's so bad. Like, who even... I don't even know who, like, made this movie. Oh, they have Ubisoft Motion Pictures. Didn't know that they had that new Regency uh, Productions. Marco, that video game was so huge, especially at the time that was made. The, the game is now a meme. Well, my thing is, like, I stopped playing... odyssey thought was great like i liked like the greek mythology mm -hmm. edition and everything then they came out with the new one valhalla yeah a apparently the game is just terrible like there's zero stealth like you're just walking out in the wide open and just fight people um and then on top of that in order to beat the game it takes like 180 hours it's like nobody like people like want like i like a, a single player game that may take me like anywhere from 70 to 100 hours like i'm fine with being able to do that when it starts getting to 130 hours or more you're talking like that is like three months of investing at least like three hours a day playing so i don't have that obsessiveness where it's like i play it and i have to beat it right away sometimes i like to I'm but if i don't have the time i just don't have the time i'm running into that problem right now so my thing is, like, you're telling me I'm going to pay the same price for this game, and it's going to take me three months to beat? That's awesome, because I don't have to buy another game for three months. But so so, that, so that's why I like it, like, if a single-player game, like, I always thought, like, if it was 60 hours, that was when games costed $60, mm -hmm. I was like, a dollar per hour? That's a great deal. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, there's $70, I'm like, I better get 70 hours of content out of that. 
But, like, um, I have that, I'm having that problem with Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. There is so much content in this game, and I'm like, this is going to take me hours to beat. How much did you pay for this? Um, I, I got... Lego games are usually, like, half the price of... So, the, the base game was $70. I paid $80 to get a Mandalorian, Rogue One, uh, Solo, and I think a Bad Batch character pack. Go on. But, so, they changed it up a bit. One, there's RPG elements. You can upgrade your various classes of characters, and you have just base... Is this not a kid's game anymore? It's, it's, that's the thing is, it's like, it's super easy, but like, there's complicated parts too. Like, so there's these kyber bricks that you have to go around and find, mm -hmm. or, or, or earn or get, however. There's 1,166 of them. You can get six per mission if you complete all the challenges and stuff in those missions. There's five missions per movie, so there's 45 total missions. Multiply that by six you get like 400 of those from that the other what is that like 700 are so you have all there's 23 planets and there's open world elements to them where you can just go around do side quests and those side quests grant you more kyber bricks and it's like it's absurd in some of these missions that you do you have to do the most insane puzzles to get the like Puzzles where I'm sitting there and I'm like, I have no idea how to do this. I was like, they expect a 10-year-old to do this? I'm not going to lie to you, especially because I never play games when they're new. So by the time I get to it, it's been out a year. If there's like a puzzle, I usually just YouTube it. Because it's like, I'm going to I'm not having fun solving a puzzle. So the problem with this, with that game, is like, I search, like some of them you can search. Mm -hmm. Other ones, it's like, if I try finding it, I have to click on the video that's like, Two hours long going through all the puzzles in world, that one yeah. map. And it's like, now I have to skip through the video and find, like, when they get to that part. I'm intrigued. So, what's it called? Lego Scar Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. So, it goes through all six movies? One through nine. All nine movies. Really? Does it start at the beginning? So, you have the choice. You can start at episode one. You can start at episode four. Or you can start at episode uh, seven. And then work your way back. So, you can always... So, like, if I started at Episode 7 and played Episode 8, but I want to go start playing the prequel trilogy, mm -hmm. I could just start at Episode 1 if I wanted. You are can't... you a different character every time, or are you taking the Mandalorian back to Episode 1? So, if you're playing story mode, you have to play as the characters for those missions. Okay. But you can go back and do free play to get all the collectibles you missed. Mm-hmm. Because some collectibles you can't get on the first playthrough because you, you need characters character. from the other eras and stuff. I played the, the Lego games make me laugh because they used to be free. They would just like, hey, you bought an Xbox, here's Lego, yeah. whatever. This is like intense for a Lego game. And then it like upgrades to like, all right, now it's half the price of a normal game. Now it's just a normal game. Honestly, I think the last one I played was the DC one. Where they DC had, super villains? I think so, because they had like 90 characters. Mm -hmm. I didn't play it on my own. Um, someone had it. And it's fun. So and there's a lot of cool, like, uh, what do you call them, Easter eggs? Yeah. Th there's a hilarious Easter egg in, uh, there's a multiple of them, but the one I love the most playing through episode two mm -hmm. is remember when Anakin's having the nightmares about his mother dying? Yes. And so, like, he wakes up, him and Padme end up going tattooing after. Mm -hmm. So, in this game, right after he has the nightmare, they're walking out of uh, the palace, and you need to go walk over to the ship. As you're walking out of the palace, Padme goes, what were your nightmares about, sand? And he's like, yes, it was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Like, they poke a lot of fun at, like, various oh. Star Wars memes in this mm -hmm. one. Um, like more so than the other ones because they actually have voice acting for every character. So they have the Clone Wars voice actors for all the Clone Wars characters. They started that with that DC Super Villains one where they're yeah. actually paying the actors to come in. They had the voice acting for Han. I was shocked because usually like people butcher Han's voice a lot in these mm -hmm. voice acting roles. Very good. Luke's voice acting is very good. Um, all around like it. it Good voice acting. I think the biggest one that like is a little off maybe Leia's. I didn't 
R.I.P. Princess Leia. I haven't um, gotten to episode seven yet, though. I didn't realize. So Joe made a joke the other day because I was like, I haven't seen Marco here all week, and he just like, yeah. And uh, so I made the joke. I was like, what? Elden Ring have an expansion pack? And he goes, Lego Star Wars, Lego right? Skywalker, <laughs> or Skywalker something or other. And I thought he was joking, and I laughed. <laughs> I didn't realize this was an accurate thing. Oh no, this is real. Uh, oh, that was the day he goes, uh, he asked for the day off, and he doesn't realize he just can take a day off. He doesn't need permission. I did? Uh, you asked for the day off. Oh yeah, It must did. have been Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. And that's no. why I made the Elden Ring joke, because I just assumed. Yeah, no, Elden Ring, I'm on my second playthrough, but I won't be playing it for a while. How'd you end up doing on your farm? Uh, oh, exam last week. I got a 93 or 94. Oh, there you go. It was one of the most stress. So somehow I managed to finish the exam, got a 93. Mm -hmm. I was talking to other people about it. I was the only person in the class to finish it, I think. Really? Out of everybody I've talked to, nobody else finished the exam yet. Mm -hmm. I was, so I finished the was exam. Was it timed or? Yeah, so we only had 90 minutes to do it. I finished with like 18 minutes to spare. So mm -hmm. I went back and looked at things. But like the first 40 questions, I finished in like 30 minutes. The last, like, 30 questions took so long because there were multiple parts to them, and I was like, oh, my God, this is awful. Did they end up uh, grading on a curve? or No. Oh, really? And then I know I bombed the quiz yesterday. Because after, let's see, I have uh, four weeks left in the semester. After 11 weeks, I realized that the textbook I have was the wrong textbook. Turns out I've been learning pharmacology in Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> so... So there's this study guide version of the textbook, which I went on Amazon, I searched it, like he had for, like, copy and pasted the thing in, uh, the name of the book, put it in there, got it, made sure it said study guide, got the book, looked exactly the same as his, so he told us, he's like, yeah, so the quiz that we had yesterday, he's like, I'll post, um, the answers to all the study guide questions for this chapter in there. And he's like, it's going to be just, the quiz is just going to be based on some of those study guide questions. So I'm looking through his study guide thing for the answers, and I'm like, why does he have all these questions? And I have like half as many of these. And I'm looking through, I'm like, wait, this may not actually be the actual proper study guide one. So then I found it in the library. They look identical. Same book, same amount of pages. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... How does the study guide edition that has like mm -hmm. twice the amount of questions have the same amount of pages as the one without it? Yeah, it's trippy. Are you able where this library gonna let you have it for four weeks or um what I'm gonna do is is anytime uh we have a quiz now, I'm gonna just go down to the library, open it up, take a picture of mm -hmm. the pages I need, and then I could just take it, but I don't wanna have to remember, I have to like bring it back or anything. Oh no worries. I just know with textbooks they have weird rules. Yeah. But I was like, but also, like, I was looking through it. He's a, the teacher's a great guy and everything, but, like, there were stuff that was being asked on this quiz that we don't cover through his lectures at all. Like, there are terms and stuff mm -hmm. on, like, for these answers. I'm like, we've never covered these terms. There are some drugs on this. We've never talked about these drugs because you say yourself, don't worry about the names of the drugs. Then we're getting questions. What drug do you use for this situation? Yeah. I don't miss it. I don't miss class at all. It's probably going to be the lowest grade I'll ever get in college. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, this year was. Excuse me. Last year semester. You doing anything? As far as like I'm events? Or are you going to go to graduation? Or oh, I'm not, Well, graduation is the day after that stag party. Classic. And then I'm going to a bachelor party the day of graduation. Uh, so no, you're not going. No, no judgment. Like, I I don't. I'm not into those events. I never went. And and my thing is just like if your family doesn't push you to go. So I didn't realize how much of an achievement it is for people to like do this. Mm -hmm. For you, this is step one. For well, some like, people, it's. I did. I did. Like, I don't want to sound like a dick. I didn't out. realize how much people legitimately struggle with school. I didn't realize how much people study. <laughs> I sound like such an asshole right now. 
<laughs> like you're the, definitely the person people hate the most. The ones I, that don't have to study and I like I didn't realize that people like it actually I use studying as a way to get out doing stuff. I also realize now that we've been sitting in the shadows this whole time <laughs> and didn't turn on the light. Yep. So this video is gonna be almost useless. The same as last week, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the videographer would have said something. <laughs> But yeah, so like, I didn't realize like people like, like they like like you know like how like um they say for every credit you should be doing three hours outside of school of studying. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize people actually did that. The worst part is there's teachers that hold you to that. Oh my god! Don't even get me started with that. <laughs> I've had some teachers, and it just that one class will just ruin you for the entire well, semester. It's like, have you ever had it with an online class? Yes. It's like the they, they start assigning the most ridiculous work just to make sure that you're working like nine hours a week. What's crazy the is class. that first COVID semester, when we started halfway through the semester, we went home, went all online. All of a sudden, that classwork got times 10 of what we were doing in the classroom. It was insane. I have the complete opposite problem. My teachers were so unprepared for this to happen that they didn't know what to do because they were all trying to like just put up the assignments and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was so messed up that they had no restrictions on when you could do work. So I finished all my work in like the first two weeks. So That's I was awesome. just like laying back doing nothing. All my teachers were tech guys. So it's just like they, they figured it out yeah. in like three days. The amount of problems that some of those people had, I'm like, you guys shouldn't have a job at this point. Like if you can't use technology like to that degree, like I've seen the Canvas website, how it works. It's not that hard. Uh, no, definitely not, but it's, it'll all be phased out soon. Yeah. But, like, uh, I, I just, like, graduation. But the, uh, there's 750 kids at the school. How many are actually, like, graduating this semester, probably? For like, me, it's just, like, I didn't really talk to too many people. So, it's, like, I'm going to show up and listen to a four-hour ceremony, deal with parking. The worst is the speeches. So, I went to community yeah. college first. Yeah. I went to that one, and I sat there, and I was like, never again. We sat... And I hated my high school graduation. High school was okay, because you, like, knew the speakers. But the community ones were just, like, they get community members to talk. All of a sudden, you're six speeches deep, and you're just sitting there. Well, they, th they throw you in the gym at MCLA. I can't imagine it's cozy in there. I can only imagine it's, like, 100 degrees in there. Jo I remember Joe's graduation for Taconic. Yep. They crammed... the so many people in that gymnasium. I was drenched in sweat because there's zero air circulation in there. Oh, we got a visitor. All right, Marco. Should I pause or should oh, I? Oh, no. I, I, I'm just going to keep talking, but I can't wait to see what this is. Is it a stripper gram? Oh, boy. This is exciting. What do you guys think it is? Is that what they're called, stripper grams? I'm gonna search this on my computer and my history is gonna be forever ruined. Stripper gram, a surprise visit on a special, yes, it is called a stripper gram. Oh, they were asking him for something. Oh man, let's see, he's coming back. You didn't look out the window? Have you been talking or am I gonna have to edit this? Oh uh, no, I was I was I said to you, ooh, do you think it's a stripper gram? And then I needed to make sure that was the right term. So I <laughs> talked to them and I, I was like, oh I'm just gonna search to make sure that was the right term. <laughs> um elderly gentleman wanted signatures for Senator Neal. I passed. I don't know who that is. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm good I'm, I'm good. What, what what is the signature gonna do? I'm not going to lie, Marco, the first three years I lived here, if I didn't know the person at the door, I just didn't answer. So, we have the uh, blank security cameras at my mom's mm -hmm. house. If that goes off and I'm not expecting anybody, I look at it, I see who it is. If it's somebody I don't know, put my phone down and continue doing what I'm doing. Again, I don't know who Senator Neal is and I just didn't want to get involved. Yeah. But he also had a package. Where he's keeping the signatures so i thought maybe my girl got something delivered uh -uh. and then all of a sudden it's just like did you turn away my package no <laughs> i i ordered candy from an elderly gentleman up the road he said he was dropping it off today did he like drive here or was he just walking around he was walking 
I wonder where his car is. Uh, probably parked across the street. Mm. Going up and down the road. All right, man. I don't want to cut this short. We're at 50 minutes, though. Oh, yeah. Good. So I think that's a good stopping point. Oh, we probably should have just ended. <laughs> Went to the door, then. <laughs> hey, we're a work in progress. And as long as you keep working towards something, it still counts. Yeah. All right, guys. I've been Nerds in the Gym podcast. We Did you just say I've been Nerds in the Gym? <laughs> We've what I don't tell you is I do six episodes a week. Have you the Saturday episode? Actually, before, have you seen that Skip Bayless does a podcast yeah. by himself now? Yes. How many po- Well, Chris D'Elia has his by himself. I feel like a one-person podcast, that's weird. My thing is I don't... I don't really talk to myself. So, I just have to give my thoughts and opinions. Chris D'Elia does it for like an hour. He's not... He's, I think he just finds a bunch of content that he enjoys way beforehand just to shit on it. It could be, but just... Yeah, I don't know how they do it. As far as Skip Bayless goes, just like, that's just Skip Bayless unchecked? Yeah. No thanks, he's the worst part about those shows. 